Right, so this is the very first audit I did as a Foundation Year One doctor or house officer while in Medway Maritime Hospital, which we entitled the Acute Coronary Care Syndrome, completed in November 2009. Uh, more specifically, it was an audit of acute coronary syndrome admissions to the cardiology ward, also known as B3 at the time. And the aims of our audit were to determine the number of ACS admissions that are troponin positive, to determine if accuracy of diagnosis relates to grade of referring physician, to identify features that may help to differentiate ACS from other causes of chest pain, and to identify the diseases most commonly misdiagnosed as ACS. We felt it was important because coronary heart disease is the most common cause of death in the UK. One in five men and one in six women die from coronary artery disease and it is responsible for around 100,000 deaths in the UK each year with a cost to the NHS of £16 billion and 69 million workdays lost. Why is it important to recognise it early? If it's overdiagnosed, then we could avoid inappropriate diagnosis and treatment and reduce unnecessary admission. On the other hand, identified patients that may require specialist assessment and management and reduce morbidity and mortality. The hospital guidelines for the management of chest pain, starting with out of hospital presentation, chest pain, associated symptoms, history, examination build up a differential diagnosis. If there is a working diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome, call for an ambulance and do all of the following. Aspirin, GTN, oxygen, opiate analgesia, immediately transferred to accident and emergency. We audited against the NICE guidelines on management of chest pain, which require detailed clinical history, including character, associated symptoms, history of coronary artery disease, risk factors and previous investigations, a 12-lead ECG, oximetry, troponin assessment at baseline or at assessment and at 12 hours. The method, we included patients admitted to the cardiology ward with suspected acute coronary syndrome and the exclusion criteria, patients who had the troponin result available prior to the cardiology ward and we prof uh, developed a structured performa. Results, in one month there were a total of 35 patients referred to the cardiology ward with suspected acute coronary syndrome. Of those, five were troponin positive and two were thought to uh, fall in, under the umbrella of unstable angina and therefore a total of 28 were not ACS. So suspected ACS confirmed on the ward in total 7 out of 35 or 20 percent. So we're working with really a very small number but about one patient a day or so on average. Here it is in a pie chart and we then broke it up um, by age and presented it in different formats we broke it down by the grade of the referring physician and whether a consultant post a ward round altered the outcome. Um, in terms of the NICE guidelines, we were interested in the features documented in the history, such as in relation to pain, character, location, radiation, duration, etc which were quite inconsistently recorded um, and again further subdivisions of the character of pain um, radiation of pain and associated symptoms were um, variably um, asked about likewise risk factors um, so the above were really um, sort of non-specific essentially because of the very small number of patients in the audit. 
Results, average length of stay for troponin positive patient was 6.3 days. However, even for troponin negative patients, it was still 3.5 days. And the differential diagnosis at discharge, um, where it wasn't ACS, was unknown cause in the majority of patients. Occasionally musculoskeletal, case of cholecystitis and a case of pericarditis. We'll summarize it there. So non-specific chest pain essentially accounted for the majority of patients referred to the cardiology ward with a diagnosis of ACS clinically. In conclusion, Without the use of biochemical markers, the correct identification of ACS is low. Correct identification of ACS is unrelated to the grade of referring physician or to the presence of a post ward round. However, this was a very small number of cases. Important features outlined in NICE guidelines were commonly omitted from clerking. This is in particular referring to the clinical history. This may not affect outcome as features of the history did not correlate well to the presence or absence of ACS. And in most cases of non-ACS chest pain, the cause was never identified during the acute admission. Limitations, as we said, a small number of patients, particularly in the ACS positive group, relies on accuracy of documentation in the notes Errors may occur in reading the notes and inputting data onto the performer. Unstable angina may not have been identified. Limitations again, often troponin has already been sent by the time of the, um, the post egg world round occurs, so this essentially would be a retrospective assessment of the patient. Suggestions. Perhaps a more detailed clerking in, nice, in line with the NICE guidelines may prove to be more helpful. Um, and perhaps to broaden the differential diagnosis on admission. And because essentially we heavily rely on troponin, if this is taken at the wrong time or not taken or patients are mixed up and it's taken from the wrong patient which has happened in the past and we need to have really strong safeguarding in the case of suspected acute coronary syndrome not to um, any in any way misinterpret the troponin or record the wrong troponin or at the wrong time etc. So we're going to end it with a funny cartoon I found on the internet. Thank you.